platform. So named for some special reason of my own. But it's for room at houses, television sets, large radiograms, and monsters generally. And <clears throat> pre-war TV was by the very nature of things very, very large. It had large transformers, large components, and above all else, a tube that was probably 27 inches long. This meant the set, set had, had the tube mounted vertically, the scanning coils reversed, or the X and Y plates reversed, and shot up onto a mirror. And this is a typical example of RGD's handiwork. They were big, they were clumsy, but above all else, they were efficient, and they worked well, and they kept on working, which was rather nice. They made 11 of these, and this, I believe, is the only known example left working. It combined a record changer, it had a, a, a four wave band radio, long, medium, and two short, and it had twin speakers, and it weighed about a quarter of a ton. It's one hell of a set, and it folded down to make a quite neat piece of furniture. But you need to live in a castle or a stately home to have room for it. Also, it had to be rather rich. I think it retailed at something like 140 guineas in 1937. But a very fine set for all that. We're very proud of it. 38, 39, television were getting more sophisticated. Sets were getting smaller, tubes were getting shorter, angle of deflection was getting better and they were generally improving. And this was the HMV effort for that year. It was a nine inch screen, but it did have a decent radio with it as well. It was a, a reasonable piece of furniture. And to this day, when it's fired up, still does give quite a good account of itself. Um, in 1939, televisions were being manufactured almost up to the outbreak of war. And Philco started to develop this model. It doesn't look like a television set till you press the button on the front. It's known as a pop-up Philco. They didn't actually turn up until after the war. They weren't allowed to go into production because Philco's had to start making government surplus stuff instead, you see. But it was quite a nice set. It was TV only. Had a little flap on the bottom where you could get down your hands and knees and adjust all your line hold, frame hold, height and focus and everything else. And as you pressed the button, so it automatically switched itself on as well. You used a Mazda tube, which meant it didn't get a very good picture. But it was television. That's something. It's been showing you um, television sets of the pre-war period in the Acliff room. We're now in the Kingswood room, showing you how we arrive at a 405 line signal. In 1985, they closed down 405 line for good, and we had to make do with 625 line colour, which isn't an awful lot of good to a pre-war television set. Fortunately, the BBC gave us this equipment when they shut it down, and <coughs> we've now got this pumped around both buildings at 405 line. Not only that, we have also got waveform monitor, test equipment, and the various patterns. So we have what we call bar sinister and pluge, plus test card C. And we've also got all the music to go with it if necessary. And that is on 625, but I can switch on the standard converter and I can show you what happens on 405, as soon as it settles down, you see. Different, slightly different aspect ratio. Um, <coughs> obviously more lines, but you're still resolving three and a half megs bandwidth. And then the five megs bandwidth on 625. You see why 625 line was so essential. Color in 405 would have been disastrous.